So I'm Robert Friedman. Hello. Good afternoon. <laughs> Uh, I've got 20 minutes to talk to you about SUSTRANS, um, but I should say that the main reason I'm here is that I'm already uh, an OpenStreetMap mapper enthusiast, um, and so on. I'm, I'm really interested in the, what potential there is to link the work of, of SUSTRANS and organizations like SUSTRANS with OpenStreetMap to the benefit of both. Um, I'm actually pretty new to SUSTRANS, I've been working for SUSTRANS for six months and I'm on a one-year contract so I have, I have one very specific job to do which I'll talk a little bit more about later on. So I'm not going to be able to give you detailed technical answers about the, the more general work of SUSTRANS but I hope I'll be able to give you a little bit of an introduction to the organisation um, before I talk more about my own job. I hope that I can turn my lack of the, the, the bigger knowledge of SUSTRANS into our advantage actually and to, tell, to give you something slightly more informal about what I do and about where I think OpenStreetMap links with that. So the three things I'm going to talk about, a little bit about SUSTRANS and what it does for those people that don't already know about it, a little bit about my role and how that links with OpenStreetMap and what I've titled what we've been talking about in the office. So, Really informally, just some developments which I think are, are happening through, in, within SUSTRANS, which I think, I hope, will be of interest to, to the OpenStreetMap community. A lot of people have heard of SUSTRANS because of the National Cycling Network. Many of you may recognize the red number which appears on signposts and signs uh, as an indication of the the National Cycle Network. It's even something which is written into the formal documentation. You're, you're legally allowed to put it on science, which is quite, quite something, I think. There are some kind of formal statistics here. 2,100 miles of National Cycle Network in Scotland. That's one of these numbers that actually is a bit vague. It keeps increasing. It's a mixture of traffic peak paths, um, canal tow paths, and forest tracks, and so on. 75% of it's on road. Actually, only 5% of it is managed by SUSTRANS. We spend a lot of time within the office uh, fielding queries from people who want to know why we haven't fixed the pothole or whatever, and actually they are then forwarding on those, those queries to the local authority, to the council, to the, the, the organisation which is actually responsible for that bit of the land. I'm interested in where the number 7,000 signs comes from because actually I know I've added to that already and then Martin's starting to it. Kind of formal definition of, or relatively formal definition of what SUSTRANS uh, does and what it is. SUSTRANS is the charity that is enabling people to travel by foot, bike, or public transport for more of the journeys we make every day. Our work makes it possible for people to choose healthier, cleaner, and cheaper journeys with better places and spaces to move through and live in. What interests me about SUSTRANS, and one of the reasons I'm enjoying working for SUSTRANS, is that it's or whilst it's been known to the National Cycle Network, actually, when I become more involved in it, I find it's doing a, an awful lot more. And that's really what I want to tell you a bit more about, is the, the, the stuff which is not the National Cycle Network. So, I'm just going to briefly outline four, four of the kind of projects, four of the themes of work within the, the, within the organisation. We have the Community Links Programme. Um, I'm, I'm, no, I'm no expert in the Community Links Programme, but the way I picture it is that it's, it's, uh, it's money which enables councils and other statutory organisations to build small key links which make a very good difference to cycling and walking and other modes of transport rather than public, public uh, uh, private cars. So that's what the map is here, uh, a small key link which makes a very big difference. Um, the descriptions, it links the places that people live in with the places they want to get to. Last year there were over 100 applications. Um, SUSTRANS was working with 34 partners. The applications were for 8.6 million pounds of funding and the budget was for only 6.5 million pounds of funding, uh, which meant there were people who were disappointed. But it is a substantial pot of money. Um, it's more than, it's, it's quite a lot more than half of the Scottish uh, SUSTRANS budget. 
So that's very much not the National Cycle Network, although some of these links make bits of National Cycle Network possible. What really interests me about this is it's not just uh, it's not just a piece of infrastructure. The applications, as I understand it, the applications which are viewed very favourably are the ones which have links in with uh, action plans for cycling and, and walking and so on. So if, if I think if a council comes along and says we just want to build this path just because it would be convenient, then much less likely than if they say, well, we have this big project to make it more possible for people to walk and cycle around their area, then it's more likely to get funding. It's a match funding project, so uh, the, the money which Sustrans puts in has to be matched by, by other, other money. 50-50, I think. Earlier on, somebody mentioned the Bridge to Nowhere, or what we, we're calling the bridge to, bridge to Everywhere in Glasgow. This is one of, it's the, the bridge in the middle, in the middle here, which, when the motorway system was built in Glasgow, was never finished. And uh, a project called Connect2, which has 79 uh, schemes like this across the whole of the UK, <coughs> Three or four of which are in Scotland. This is the one that's, been, that's made the most um, press, uh, people have taken most notice of in the press. So we echo the bridge to everywhere. Uh, it's doing really the same thing, I think, as the community links, which is it's, it's making a very useful link which makes walking and cycling and so on much more possible. One of the interesting things was within the office, related to OpenStreetMap, um, I'm going to say a little bit more about my enthusiasm for OpenStreetMap and how I feed that into Sustrans. But one of the interesting things which I noticed was that when this bridge was opened, that one of the tweets about it was saying, we got it on OpenStreetMap, which was then retweeted within our organization, within Sustrans, to say just because it was relevant, people were talking about the bridge. But again, that's where I'm interested in the link between Sustrans and OpenStreetMap and how both benefit from, from that link. One of the other projects is street design, and what really we're talking about here is that if you get properly engaged with a local community, the kind of things that they talk about are um, you know, what, we, what we, we're worried about, the safety of our children on the street outside, there's, there's, there's so many cars parked there and the traffic's travelling so fast, that when we get properly engaged with, with those local communities, that what they, they look for uh, becomes the same things which Sustrans is interested in in terms of better, better places and making it more possible, possible for people to walk and cycle and so on. And there's a whole, there's a whole theme of the work within Sustrans which, is, which we, we label as behaviour change. And it's all the difficult stuff where you're not just building something, but you're actually trying to find ways to help people to, to change habits. Uh, and that again is one of the, the reasons I'm interested in the organisation and why I'm pleased to be working for it is that that's, that's when you can get a little, little bit more imaginative how are we actually going to get people out of this habit and into this habit. Um, it's not just within schools, although schools work I think is quite a big chunk of the work, which is what by the picture. Um, we have officers who work within schools providing training and support for kids and for the schools to help to develop and support cycling and walking and so on. And that help is very intensive for the first year and less for the next year and, and, and so on. And I think we have a number of officers working for 10 to 12 schools each across, across various bits of Scotland. Uh, it's not just with schools, but schools is a, is a particularly major element of the work. So, my role. Um, I have a very specific responsibility, which is to work at a signage scheme for the John Muir Way which is, we can get a complicated bit about the John Muir Way in East Lothian later, but fundamentally it's a long distance uh, route linking Dunbar and Hallowsborough. So, you know, equivalent of the West Highland Way, for example. Um, I'm very interested in it for a number of reasons. Part of, I like the route, but as well as that, um, I think it's very interesting because it's been one of the routes which has come into place after the access legislation in Scotland, which means that people are having to think much more intelligently about how we label it. Is it a walking route? Is it a cycling route? Is it something else? Um, and how is that signed? You know, do we sign it? Do we label it? Do we describe it as a walking route or a cycling route or whatever? Is it is a bit more imagination going into it than, than there has been perhaps in some, you know, some of the routes in the past? Uh, which gives me as the signage person some big headaches, it should be said. Um, for me, what it means is an awful lot of signs and an awful lot of photographs of 
blog posts and lots of descriptions to say I'd like one of these signs on here and pointing in this direction. That's one of the many hundreds of photographs. Uh, Martin, who was talking to you from the, the council from Sustrans earlier on, Martin's been involved in this project as well, and has contributed to hundreds of photographs. My job is to describe to people, to this installers, exactly what I want, where and what angle they should be pointing at. What that means, and where I think it gets interesting in terms of the kind of map and GIS stuff, is that I need an application to use which, had, which it can handle some very difficult tasks. We use, at the moment within SASTRANS, we use MapInfo, which is a rough equivalent of ArcGIS as a professional GIS application. The job it has to do, and you see me working on it here, is for me is, is plotting lots of different signs, pointing in lots of different directions, lots of different details for each of those signs, reference numbers and angles and so on. Where my role and OpenStreetMap can coincide, um, as I've said, I've come into this with already an enthusiasm for OpenStreetMap. So, I'm interested to find that the application which I use on the smartphone, I have a smartphone which I use for surveying because it allows me to take photographs and the photographs are geotagged and it allows me to take um, point data and to record text about those points, all about science and so on. Uh, interestingly, the application which we found to do that is a relatively new application and what it uses as a background map is OpenStreetMap. Uh, and it does it in a simple way by downloading it each time I'm standing in a, a place. So that, that's, that's of interest to me. Then I've also come in with my own GPS receiver, which I already use for my own hobbies and interests. And it's been, rather than trying to set up something within SUSTRANS, it's just like I've grabbed it from home and brought it with me. <laughs> uh, it's preloaded with uh, two versions of OpenStreetMap, the map from Toki Toaster and the map from MTB Maps, um, Open MTB Maps. That's very useful just in terms of my route finding. This is a new route, so I've got, it's me determining where it goes in, in lots of places. Uh, so I have a line to follow, and of course I've taken the line that I've been given and made that into a file which my GPS receiver will display for me. But I do a little bit more than that. When I, and, and I get very interested here that sometimes when I'm going out to work at the science in a new area, what I really find helpful to know is what am I going to find there? And the ordinary survey map which is what our mapping systems are mostly based on. The ordinary survey map will tell me so much, but sometimes the open street map mapping will tell me more. So for places like Christophen Hill, for example, the, the, the actual paths which really exist, and all the little ones, all, many of them are mapped. So that for me, when I'm going out to try to work out what am I going to do today, am I going to have an easy job mapping some obvious big track, or am I going to have a nightmare walking through the woods and having to find you know, my way through lots of different small tracks? OpenStreetMap tells me that already and I find it very useful for that. Um, yeah. And I also then, uh, you know, occasionally I will collect data while I'm out to record on OpenStreetMap when I get back. Sometimes it's for my own interest and I'll do that in my own time. Occasionally it's actually relevant for, very relevant for the job. So I'll do that in office time. There was one a couple of days ago out in um, Falker, where the track was, was a new track which has been built for the, for the partly because of John Muir way, and I've now added that onto the map because it's useful for us, but then you know, it's also useful for everybody else. I'm also using a little bit QGIS, the open source GIS system, <coughs> and I use that. I still find it very hard to use that for anything very big within the job. But it does do one very useful thing, which is it's very happy to talk to GPS, GPX files from my GPS receiver. And when I'm transferring lines backwards and forwards between map info and my receiver, it's, it's very good at doing that. <coughs> so what we've been talking about in the office, this is really the kind of, not exactly gossip, but you know, this is where we're at from my perspective. The kind of frontline worker within such trends, this is where we're at in terms of OpenStreetMap. I've come in enthusiastic about OpenStreetMap, so I'm talking to people about, you know, when you send out the map to say how we're going to get to this location for this, whatever, this event, instead of saying, sending that Google map, which doesn't really show it, why don't we send the OpenStreetMap cycle, cycle map layer, which will show us all how to get there by bicycle? 
So that's just a general enthusiasm uh, as a tool. Talking about it as a tool. I'm also talking to people about it's, it's uh, the wider perspective that OpenStreetMap might have for for the work of Sustrans. So not just internally, but when we're working with when we're doing street mapping, street design, how can we link OpenStreetMap in with that, for example? Generally, there's a conversation going on in the office that starts off with the National Cycle Network because it's very easy to see where there are some errors on OpenStreetMap. Um, so there's a conversation about how do we within Sustrans interact with OpenStreetMap to try to make sure that the data on OpenStreetMap is as good as possible. What's the right way for us to do that, given that we're all really pressed for time and so on? So there's a, a fairly rich conversation going on, particularly within the technical teams that I'm involved with, about how do we do that. And I'm quite interested over the next couple of days to talk about those ideas, some of those ideas. There's a wider conversation going on within Sustrans about open data and open street map. I've been very keen to the I've been very keen to uh, to try to pass it into the wider Sustrans organisation about what, again where I think there's potential for for linking Sustrans with OpenStreetMap and OpenStreetMap with Sustrans. And, and I think that's, that's getting somewhere. There have been some recent changes of people and the organization's growing, you know, is a very relevant thing. But there have been recent changes in people, recently new people to do with GIS in the, the whole national um, Sustrans organization. And I think that's opening up a lot of potential <coughs> for new things to happen. So I know that the use of OpenStreetMap is being explored in England projects in England which have a kind of community links stuff going on and I hope that they will find it's really useful which will lead to more enthusiasm and more people using it and more links. There is also, I think it's extremely likely that Sustrans will be releasing the um, National Cycle ne Network data as open data very soon. Um, I can't tell you that officially, I don't think that there have been any official announcements, but I would very much strongly encourage you to look out for it. I've been told I can't tell you unofficially. <laughs> <laughs> so the gossip is, if you like, that the Open Street, the um, National Cycle Network data will become available as open data. I think that's been a conversation that's been going on for quite a while, but I think it looks like it's likely to happen. For me, I think that's really promising because the National Cycle Network is something which is a kind of um, uh, feature or project for for Sustrans, it's what we're known for, and if we can get, if we can make a link between Sustrans and OpenStreetMap through that, that particular data and, 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 and we're being interested in the National Cycle Network, I think we gain from within Sustrans by the network being publicised more and being accurate and people being able to find it, and OpenStreetMap gains because we may, you know, if Sustrans starts referring people onto that mapping to say this is how you find your way around the National Cycle Network. So lots of potential, I think, and I'd, I'd like to kind of encourage people to, to look out for that. Lastly, what I wanted to sort of say, this is what I'm hoping for from the conference for me, and from my perspective, just as I've said, the connection, uh, the, the kind of heads up in terms of the, what I think is something exciting in terms of open, the potential for there to be open data about the, the National Cycle Network. Uh, I have some input to, to feed in on routing, some conversations, um, Mark has been part of these, to do with routing and, and OpenStreetMap. As lots of you will know, cycle streets is something people notice as being in OpenStreetMap. And um, I think there's an interesting conversation there about how do we make sure that, for example, once Martin's routes are all in existing Edinburgh, that people could choose to say, I'd like to follow numbered routes with signs, which isn't possible at home. At home. So I think, and I think there's, there's, there's a couple of things that come out of that. One is the conversation about the routing engine, one is the conversation about the basic data, the tagging in within OpenStreetMap, and how those two things work together. Uh, and lastly, I guess I'm looking, you know, with my Sustrans hat on, I'm looking for input from, from you folks about how, how Sustrans ought to interact with OpenStreetMap. I mean, I have my own personal ideas, but I'd be interested in other people's ideas. And very, very lastly, the one thing I didn't write on here is, is that, that's becoming increasingly important in my head as I've been listening this morning is that I'm very interested in, so neither with my Sustrans hat on nor with my OpenStreetMap hat on, I'm also somebody who's very interested in usability. And I think there are some big usability issues for OpenStreetMap, which if there are other people here who'd like to talk about those, I'd like to talk to you, please. So that's me. Hope that's useful.